Alrighty. So, I'm back streaming again. I didn't do anything. YouTube threw up. Hi. Yeah, I know. I don't know what happened. We're back. It might make a whole separate stream out of it. I don't know what happened. Uh, anybody who finds their way to, you know, the, the stream literally died. The web page went splat and uh, threw everybody off. So it wasn't just you. It was and I don't know if OBS actually crashed or not. I've got it not really showing uh, my face because I find that so totally distracting having my face on there. Um, I can't get the old stream back. It just randomly died. YouTube blew up. So what I'm going to do is uh, update OBS because OBS has the previous stream. But the new one actually says this. Boop. And people can pop back in if you want. I've got a good 40 minutes or so left. 40 minutes or more. This has been a real rambly uh, stream, so I don't know if I can recap. Let's start over. Let's put it to live chat so everybody can talk. And what I can do is... Uh, Explain what this is, basically. What I was in the middle of doing after adjusting the narrowness of the band passes, we're, we're using three different band passes, which is the opposite of Sooth, but we're having them automatically balance each other so that whether I found an area of preponderant energy, meaning that the band pass is going to be loud, or whether I found an area of like maybe power or maybe nothing much happening where the band pass is going to be super quiet, they're going to adjust each other's levels to balance that. And uh, this is my code for doing it. So here's what might have... Um, gotten wrong. Although it seems as if it's adjusting them in pairs, what I thought was happening was that um, maybe it's because it's adjusting these in a loop. Like if this is larger than mid, then it's going to adjust them comparably, otherwise it'll do the opposite. I'm trying to think about whether this is doing what I want or not, because the end result had been the volume levels kept creeping up. Everything got louder eventually. And that seems not right. And one of the things going on is that it's constantly adjusting these things. It's always either creeping one of the levels up or one of the levels down. And that could be a problem. But it seems as if it should be doing it correctly. I thought maybe trimming stuff down might help. Well, here's one way to find out. I can force everything to be quieter if I have chosen wrongly. If bass track is larger than mid track, we'll make both mid track and I track it quiet. If high is larger than base, then base and make it quieter. And then if uh, mid is larger than high, you see that's only doing it in. Uh, 
Or I'm confused here. Let me keep fooling with it. We do this and then everything is constantly getting turned down and we will see what that does. I think what it's going to do is completely disable the behavior entirely so that nothing works anymore. But we'll find out real quick by trying it and seeing what happens. Because, you know, if it does a completely unexpected thing, then it will have learned something. And if it does nothing useful, I will have learned nothing. Preponderant. Go. And that's what I thought would happen. No sound. It has made everything be infinitely quiet immediately. So, boop. Uh, the YouTube is flashing windows at me. Stop that. YouTube's little picture of playback is not useful to me. So we're not going to do this thing. But what we might want to do is have everything center itself a little tiny bit. So firstly, let's take out this. And we're going to look at yet another algorithmic thing we can do, which is not this. This just made everything be silent immediately. It killed the output completely and nothing worked. That's because this stuff balances, but apparently maybe something having to do with the nature of floating point. Like I'm not sure what, how I've got these defined. It might be long doubles, but it might not be. Oh, here's what I was trying to do to fix it. So here's my set stuff balanced. I don't pay YouTube at all. If I did, I'd probably be getting more viewers. I'm not really quite sure how you even do pay YouTube to cheat. So here's our inter-channel balance stuff. We're keeping track of this. Overall balance is one thing that I did to get around the problem I was having. It was my first try. So if we take that out, we might start seeing something different. I think this is my original take on how to fix this. Having taken that out, maybe you'll have um, another misbehavior that'll show me anything. Patreon is steadily getting closer to that 2K a month goal. I mean, it's going to be a couple of months at least, which is fine because I'm spending the time patiently getting the actual parts together to the extent where as long as I can think of stuff that I can design and build using things that I have a billion of, um, I'll be ready to just dive in and go. Like, I won't have to run around buying further stuff just to begin doing that, I'll be off and running immediately. Okay, so here is our original arrangement. Here's preponderant energy. There's a mid. Those high frequencies are really high. I might not want them to go as far as that. If I increase quickness a bit. This amount of resonance is indeed very resonant. Yeah, Ben, don't worry about it. I will, well, I am more than happy to do plugins in the channel for you as far I would I would have to follow whatever rules exist as far as whether I'm able to mail electronic parts to you if you wanted to do that. I don't know. I can certainly give information of where to get stuff um, from Mouser or whatever. It's that's that's a, a big mess waiting to happen. But um, 
Yeah, I will do as much stuff as I can for you, regardless of where you were from. And I'm not sure if this is balancing. Maybe it is. I don't like the way these frequency things are laid out. I'd like it to be sort of mid-range in the middle here. It's not. I do like the changes in resonant frequency though. Bypass. On the other hand, I think it is behaving a little better now. So what are the things we were trying to do? One of the things we were trying to do is sort of adjust everything. However, we could also have everything sort of gently try to center itself. Or gently try to find what the, see if we leave this part, we have a overall balance. And that could be either the multiplying it, or I could do that by adding it and dividing. Balance is going to be one if there are no changes in level. And this is the whole way that our like relative adjustments works. So let's try that one. There. Now Overall balance is going to be sort of everything combined. Uh, might or might not be useful. Oh, in fact, I, I can see one thing that happened. Um, I've disabled balance. Here's the problem. Here's what it originally did. Let's go back and undo this a different way. I found a bug that I just made. Whether or not that's useful. I don't really need these parentheses here, but it's not going to hurt anything. If I do this now, I will see the relative shifts happening. And that's exactly what I disabled by commenting that stuff out. That was the only place where we were adjusting the relative levels of the bands. So what we were hearing was just the bands. It was doing them, but it wasn't adjusting their levels at all. And the stuff that I did was to fix problems with what we're probably going to hear now. <laughs> Namely, there's a mid-rangey sound. That's a loud hi-hat. There's some preponderant energy. A little more quickness, I think. And our levels are creeping up. This is what I was trying to avoid. So we're going to try to find a different way of avoiding that problem. Because it's doing this, and we don't want it to do this, but it's just gradually creeping up. Like if I hit bypass, it'll start over. and it'll do the same thing. 
And what I'm looking for is to take each band, find areas that might be areas of power or areas of preponderant energy. If I select an area of preponderant energy, it should balance itself back down again. That's the sooth-like behavior that we're trying to make. So what we're going to do is first quit out of this and then reevaluate this. We no longer want uh, an overall section to change this, but what we want to do is be looking at these and maybe putting a little bit of center of gravity in here. Like if it, if it goes to where we're boosting hugely, it shouldn't just stay there. It should only be staying there because the other stuff is constantly forcing it. Remember, we have this here. And this here is constantly forcing stuff to different volume levels if they don't match. If they match, then it's going to be kind of all the same. But if bass is way louder than the other ones, it's constantly going to be forcing mid and high louder and bass quieter at the same time. So I can have them trying to return to center very subtly and still have that be doing something useful. So, and it's all being done by amount. So what I might want to do is have them center by amount times amount because it's going to be a tiny value, maybe. It's possible. In fact, I can use very similar code for it too. Base balance needs to adjust. So what, we're, what we'll do is let's just steal this. Actually, we only need to steal one. There's no special reason to do this other than sometimes it's easier to just copy past. And since there's only one statement here, I don't need the brackets. Now, see what we got here? We're looking at only the one variable. And they will all need their own centering. And the centering is going to have to be a small amount, certainly not amount. That's, that's so extreme using it this way. Amount might actually change. I'm going to have to test it on different sample rates to see how that works. But this is one way of arriving at that sort of thing. No, 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 not eight times. And you see how there's the minus and then the amount. I always like using parentheses to disambiguate this stuff. People will do coding where they're like, I remember the precedence of operations and therefore I have these pluses and multipliers and powers and things all happening and they're all run together and you're supposed to remember it. And I never like that. I would rather use explicit disambiguation of that stuff. Anyways, if high is larger than one, it's going to be subtracted something. Otherwise, if it's less than one, it's going to be adding something. And we just repeat that twice for the other two. And lastly, Now, one thing about copying and pasting stuff like that is if I was wrong about everything centering around one, I would have just done the same mistake three times over. On the other hand, I did it fairly quick. I wonder if I can run this into a single line. One normally does not express this this way, but... Uh, forming these into these little blocks of uh, logic. So 
So that looks like about the same thing. So let's find out what we get. Do I still have volume compensation? Yes, I do. That was from up here. Yep. We sorted that out last week. We're no longer doing overall balance, so we don't need that. We got the sanity check for this before applying it, which seems good. Now let us, and you know, with our, first of all, let's see what we've got. I was thinking since I have them centered, I might be able to afford having much more extreme extremes available, but that remains to be seen. Boop. Yeah, relative to what what David is saying, David Pixley picks the muzzle. Um, one thing I need to learn, and it might help doing this with the card thing that I'm planning. I don't know. At least I'm I'm wrapping my head around it. Is I need to be better at not just slapping the faces of wealthy people who have disposable income, just because I didn't grow up that way. Um, Cause. I should be more appreciative because it's people like that who will let me do amazing things for the world in general. And they need to think that would be a good idea for me to do. They're quite likely to come to that conclusion, but I gotta, I gotta honor people wanting to help rather than being like, I am all about the people who have not a, you know, a nickel to rub together. Therefore, I'm doing all these free plugins. It's like, yes, I can do the free plugins, but also it's wonderful that people do help. So here we are fooling with some of the settings. We'll make it super resonant. That's really loud. Let's see if it's turning that down. And we're kind of getting louder and louder. I'm concerned about that. Maybe we don't want to be centering around one. Maybe we want to be centering around like a third. It feels like it's tracking down a little bit. And then if everything is totally unresonant, which it can get super unresonant. Yeah, well, I mean, if you have access to YouTube, I can't necessarily get you parts. I can't necessarily get you stuff, but I will give you all the information I can. You do not have to have access to the international banking system for me to be trying to take care of you because I think people should be able to use like plugins and stuff. We have things working fairly well when they're not overly resonant. It's maybe a little hotter. It's not supposed to be super hot. And then if we have very resonant, definitely on the louder side. Let's do the opposite. get this funny reaction out of this. It's really not supposed to be doing this percussive effect, although it's kind of a neat percussive effect. Here's our narrow high frequency band.
This is interesting. I think some of this is just an artifact of taking such narrow bandwidths and everything. I better know what's going on. It stops doing this when I'm not having to amplify high frequencies incredibly much. Okay, stuff is tending not to go crazy volume-wise, although I'm getting a clear volume boost. So let's jump back in here and fool around a little more. Firstly, you can damp stuff way more than before. And let's also make it so you can amplify stuff way more than before. So this is lots of dB, a boost or cut on tap. Now, what are we doing? We were chasing stuff using amount. That seems to be working. So what we're going to do is look at this that is trimming everything in this way. And instead of wanting it all to be one, let's have them all center around a slight attenuation. I'll go with uh, 0 0.5 for now seeing as everything was kind of doing what I wanted, but it was coming out too loud. If I had that to be zero, it would, everything would gradually turn down until there was no output. So let's see where this gets us. As you can see, this is now checking everything and everything is going to want to be centered around 0 0.5 rather than one. So it's pulling stuff towards this 0 0.5 value. 0 0.66 might also be relevant. I used to sell plugins for $50 a pop. I got to stop. Partly because Kagi went out of business owing me hundreds of dollars, and I had to stop. No, I didn't really have to stop. I could have found another shopping cart, but I wanted to run with the Patreon thing because that was happening at that time, and I thought it was a better match for who I am and what I do. So this is now preponderant with the adjustments in resonance. I need to adjust the space of these sweeps more so that the middle is going to be in the mid-range. And quickness probably doesn't have to be that high. And we're going to see whether this centers. On a level that's not too distorty. Granted, with these really resonant sounds, it might still get distorting. No, it's completely fine, Ben. Don't worry about it. Okay, this was about trying to make it be quieter, but it sure isn't doing that. What happens if we're not as resonant? It gradually comes back. And it is, in fact, making stuff be a little quieter now when it settles. When I say settles, what I mean is this algorithm is running and it's adjusting everything at the same time. And as it keeps going, it drifts and it drifts towards something. And before it was drifting towards everything getting louder and louder. Now I think it's drifting towards everything getting quieter and quieter. Uh, enough with the, the Jesus analogies. Uh, that, ain't, that ain't how it works. I am not religious to the point of being deeply offended by that. I just think that's an awfully silly thing to say. Now, bypass, it will play louder all of a sudden. See? And then we take it back off. 
it starts a little bit louder and then it starts fading. So our new position, which we're trying to drift towards is overly conservative. It is going too quiet. Also, I'm beginning that funny effect again. These really, really high values. Oh, interesting. We can make it freak out. I think these days there are enough sane people in the government to not be starting a war with Iran. I also, if you're interested in all that kind of talk, the person I would direct you to is a guy that goes by Bow of the Fifth Column. I think he knows what he's talking about. Robin Hood, I can get behind. That makes sense. Oh, hey, we, got, we came back from our overload. Check this out. Set it to the wrong thing. It freaks out. Turn it back on, it's in a super duper overload, but if I leave it sitting this way, it's going to gradually creep back down again. To me, I think that means this is working. And the reason I'm getting the jittery quality is because that hi-hat is coming through on the high frequency but I have an area of power rather than an area of preponderant energy. Like that's an area of energy. This is more of an area of either power or just you're having to crank it up so much for it to be heard. It's doing the thing we're supposed to do with this, but it's producing something of a weird effect that way. If I put it all the way back here, we're no longer getting that effect. That's being driven by the high frequency thing. Actually, that might be an opportunity for me to adjust the quickness control. Let's set it like that again. I bet if I slow quickness down, it'll behave itself a little more. Yeah. Jumpier here. And totally smooth here. Yeah, quickness, that's a very sensitive adjustment that I'm not really quite sure what you mean by modulation coding scheme and spread spectrum method. I mean, this is spreading a spectrum, but perhaps not quite in that way. I'm just listening to what this does. I said it this way, what you're hearing when you hear that funny... the funny interaction there is high frequency is constantly trying to come up and that's pushing the other two down. So it's doing like a weird... Uh, like one of those funny bus compression sidechain things it's side chaining the other bands down and the reason it's doing the jittery effect is because high frequency has a very spiky transient heavy level of input that is being turned up super loud. And it's modulating the other stuff. And if we turn quickness, actually we just got to the end of the track, so that's not how that works. Turning quickness way down will smooth that out. 
that's the sound of all of these bands side chaining each other, which is literally what I've designed them to do. But when it happens super fast, it gets interactive and kind of creepy. Or, creepy is not the right word. Um, it gets kind of freaky. It starts sounding like an effect. In fact, maybe this is starting to... I'm going to want to adjust that, and I'm going to want to adjust the frequency bands. So let's go and fool with that a little bit. Might as well get it locked down. It's getting close to the end of my, my stream day. All right, so resonance is basically fine. Let's put two decimal places on preset amount. By quad A, B, and C. I got this working out in some kind of way. Um, I think I must have set that up to work with multiple frequencies. Well, let's see what we get. Since we're scaling parameter one, <laughs> parameter one is getting multiplied by itself. It goes, starts at zero and it goes to one. And we get into base frequencies by making parameter one be smaller. So if it was just literally by quad A equals parameter one times 0 0.4999, Almost everything would be super high frequency stuff. We're multiplying it by itself, namely param one, power param one comma 2.0 times square root overall scale. Now overall scale, if we're running at 44.1K, which Dragons is, that's gonna be one. Square root of one is one, two times one is one. So this, adjusts how the this is kind of what I was doing with the previous filter or maybe a recent version of biquad where it still lets you get the full range but it skews how logarithmic the control is relative to what the sampling rate is however that does give me an easy solution which is uh, well, something of an easy solution. Uh, one, I can simply not multiply it by 4999. One of the things I need to do is have that extreme value not go up as high. Because when it does, everything breaks. So I'm going to want the extreme value to not be nearly 0 0.5. It's going to be more like 0 0.4 maybe. We can try that in the middle of trying everything else. No reason we can't see what frequencies we hit. And then the logarithmic thing. We don't have to use two here. We could use three times square root overall scale. And it should do the same basic thing, but it's going to put mid-range more in the middle of the control, which is what I'm looking to do. Also, we don't need the low frequency to be quite as subsonic as it is. I'm tempted to take another zero out of it, shall we? I took a lot out of the high frequency one, so let's take a lot out of the low frequency one, see if we can still get super subsonic ranges. But we're narrowing this range so that the usable range is more obvious. If the controls only work right in this one little tiny area, the overall plugin is gonna seem really broken. That's no good. So let's see, preset amount, quickness was, needs to be much smaller, so now it is. That was never a um, power function. So when I had it up to like 0 0.5, that's actually a very large amount. It just happens to be an amount that is times Fab's input sample. So most of the time, that's gonna be a fairly small amount of change.
That does scale things back very effectively. I'm not absolutely convinced of that part, by the way. I feel like there might be merit to it chasing, like what it's going to do is it's going to chase incredibly fast when the level is happening. And then when it goes quiet, it's not going to chase nearly as fast, but I'm no longer, I'm not that sure that's what we want. Let's take that out for the moment. And now we're just scaling it down even more. Several little changes all at once. Let's see what we got. People scorn me for making several little changes all at once. We're getting right up to the, the wire here as far as today's session is concerned. But people came back to the stream, so maybe I should continue. This is kind of in the way of last minute changes, by the way. So here we go. Resonance. Bass frequency. It's still, it's not dying when I go into the supersonics, but this is not the direction I wanted. This is giving me high frequencies up here. I want low frequencies over here. And I know one of the reasons for that, clearly, back up to here, I can't do this. This needs to be a much smaller number. I was like cutting out at the mid-range there. Not nearly. I took two zeros out. Let's put them back. Because that ain't right. That'll get me into the subsonics again. On the other hand, when I took the highs up to the high frequencies, it wasn't breaking everything anymore. So that's cool. Uh, this is literally what I'm doing with the sooth like problem. What I'm doing now is trying to make it track. Let's do another change just while we're at it. There, now we have a fixed amount, and we're also adding the same amount again, multiplied by the input sample, so it chases faster when there's audio and slower when there's not. I could also increase that by going like times four times Fab's input sample. That would make it a ratio of about like one to five, where there's always going to be a minimum amount, but then the maximum amount gets larger. I'm going to see what we get with just a straight up small addition to chase speed from that. And I've changed the bassiness, and I'm reasonably satisfied with how high the highs go. Let's make it the uh, Magic number of 42, the answer to life, the universe, and everything. And I also feel kind of like... Well, I don't know, though. And let's, quick, let's quickly see what we've got. Come on. Bill, please. Thank you. Because it's supposed to have mid-range in the middle of that control, and it was really refusing to let me have bass frequencies because I had it set wrongly. So we'll try it again and see if uh, bass frequencies are still in the wrong place. Okay, feeling good. Here's what was happening. This is scaled pretty well. Like our ultra high frequency stuff is up here. This is in fact mid range, so that's where I wanted. Then 
we're going into these super deep frequencies. What was happening before was it was going to let it go down there, but then it was just blocking it. It wasn't going to let it go down that low. Here's our very resonant low frequency. Quickness clearly needs to be bigger. And here's that behavior I was talking about where if we have stuff set fairly normally, then it's not making a kind of flickery effect going on. But if we put the high frequency really high to where the chattery hi-hat is just poking everything else, this quickness is letting everything kind of flicker. It's things are side chaining each other. And I can slow it down. And if I have it absolutely centered, we're no longer having the balancing effect. And I think that's good. I think that's correct. It does mean that everything is being drawn to, well, actually, no, it doesn't, does it? The centering force is also tied to this. So all this is doing is leaving it the same. I need to change that. Let's see what we get when we... Preset amount times 0 0.001. Let's have a minimum amount in here. So our maximum, which was working pretty well, is 1, that being the maximum of param 4, times 0 0.001, and that worked out fairly well. And if we set it down to like a hundredth of what maximum full crank is, that was so little that it wasn't doing anything. So that means if I did this, then everything would always be at the full, what previously was the full crank. And this means everything would always be at one tenth of previously full crank. Namely, it would be down at the 0 0.1 level. And this means it would be down at the 0 0.01 level on the control, and that might be appropriate. I think I would like to have it always do a little bit of this chasing and trying to get to the center, but uh, I'm game with it mostly. Uh, what I'm trying to do now is decide whether or not the centering force at very low chase speeds should be slightly more intense than the offsetting force that we've got. Because what I've got here is The centering of fourth is here, and it's amount times amount. That means that um, if we have a very high level, it gets shrunk down really hard. And our maximum amount is going to be this max of 0, 0, 001. plus itself times uh, FAP's input sample. What that means is we can put a hard-coded number in here, and then it will no longer, it'll always be trying to center a little bit. So this needs to be shrunk down, but maybe not all that much. And that might be uh, 
Hmm. Well, let's see what we get. I'm trying to think in my head as to whether that's going to make the resonant stuff go more crazy or whether that's going to make the central damped stuff be overly centered. And one quick way to do is to find out. Remember what I'm doing here, Cameron, in that uh, it is always going to be sensing the stuff in these band passes, and it's always going to be trying to make them relative balance relative to each other. How much is the question? Here we go again. Bass sound. High quickness means it should be chasing, so we should get that fluttery sound going on. And we totally do. Not sure how easily you can hear that, but it's doing it. And then as I pull it back, also, it's interesting to observe the amount to which it's peaking. Now let's turn this up. So you can hear it fluttering because it's chasing this very high frequency. And then if we have it in the mid-range, it will balance that. The high frequency stuff goes down. Back up here, it starts turning that up again. And then it starts uh, ducking the other stuff to compensate. But if we turn the quickness down, for it though. We need quickness for it to do that. Yeah, center quickness. We're kind of doing that. And let's see now. I think we're going to cut back the maximum resonance, but this is useful to have it be really silly. Because this is showing us things as to how it reacts to this stuff. middle position. And here's that the like No matter where our high frequency sits, it's balanced with the other stuff. at this extremely aggressive resonance setting. So this is at about 0 0.25. It needs to be at about 0 0.5, meaning that our whole scaling of that needs to be a little adjusted. So preset amount times 0 0.05. Let's divide that by two as well. 
A resonance should not be 16, that's far too much. Let's see what we get out of 4. And... Slightly more minimum resonance. So that quickness control that should center at something useful and not break no matter what direction you push it. Frequency seems to be good. I need to check it on uh, different sample rates. And we can dial some of this back. Our maximum uh, intensities here are far too high because I was experimenting with them. So that's going to revert to 8 maximum balance relative to anything else. That's still kind of a lot of dB. If that's not enough, I'll make it be a 16. And let's see, I did update the uh, resonance. That. I think we're getting close to the point where I might just consolidate all the sliders into the relevant places, delete the ones that are not using, and call it done. That's exciting. So here we go. Bypass. Here's maximum resonance, maximum quickness. I think there might be some room to, but I, I kind of want to leave this base region here because I'm listening to this on these pathetic little speakers. If I had this on my subs, I might be getting much more interesting results down around here and be able to dial in something useful. I just can't hear it on, on this. So yeah, I think we've got something. We can set resonance. The, it's still doing that thing with the quickness where it's definitely side chaining. But we're okay with that because that's a possible special effect you can do with it. And the slowest quickness. still giving us usable results. And this is at full resonance. So there we go. You use this to take something like this and find areas of preponderant energy. of power and then pull back that resonance until we have something that starts out like this I'm wondering whether maybe this is a good time to put in the two-thirds position of these things. Because I feel like as it's doing this, it's cutting stuff. Like my combination sound is not nearly as loud as the raw sound. So let's do that. And we can also move the controls while we're at it, I think. 
I'll do that here and hopefully remember to do the other thing I said I was going to do. Quickness, resonance, dry wet. So. Let's flip them. Resonance, quickness, and dry wet. Let's have sane defaults as long as we're doing this. That seems sensible. Base 25, mid 5, high frequency 75 is a start. And resonance is going to start out at 0 0.5. You can make it a lot smaller, you can make it bigger. Quickness, likewise, is going to start off at 0 0.5. And dry wet will start off at full wet, which means I can get rid of some of these controls. I just have to remember to update things correctly for what I just did. I'll scooch this over where I can see it. It's hiding under the chat. Update some of these things. It's a full six parameter uh, plugin. Update this. These are all normal. We can leave those the way they are. It's the same as the VST is going to be. And now we got to correct some of this. So resonance. is going to be param 4, not param 9. Turns blue, that's how you can see that it's a thing that the program understands. Quickness is going to be 5. That's this here. So, And dry wet is parameter 6. So those are correct defaults. And this is as I had it, which I think is... Oh, no, no. The thing that I said I needed to do, I immediately forgot I was going to do. Remember what that was? If high balance is larger than 0 0.5, I think it would be more correct if it was 2 thirds. Things were sneaking down so that it was a little padded relative to the dry sound, so... the one extra digit of the base. Ta-da! And... And we will build that. It will suddenly not have as many sliders. And we might be in with a, uh, a finished product here. I'll bounce it over to some of the other Dragon's tracks while I'm at it. So we might have something that looks and works like this, except for it did remember the, what we had it set to. But when we default, it will start out kind of like this. So we're to 5, 5.75. This is what it's going to start up like. Bypass this like this. This has algorithms, you silly. We're getting to adjust this a little bit, although our resonance is not super high here. We can exaggerate it somewhat, 
last minute thought, do we need to have even steeper resonances? Because I could do that. is fast enough that it's starting to get a little jittery. Let's start quickness at something else. Let's start quickness at one quarter. Let resonance get steeper. Now, having done that, the thing we just built goes in here, and back we go. I use ternary operators sometime, but it's funny. I had to update um, Spiral. Spiral uses ternary operators. And I was running into bugs on uh, recent versions of macOS because macOS apparently is not able to handle um, doing absolute values on long doubles correctly. So is using a ternary operator to avoid dividing by zero and then doing it anyway occasionally. Good point though, that would probably be handy. You might have a look at it and go like, oh, this would, I should do this. Here's our mid, bass, highs. It's more resonant than it was. Maybe this should be a power function. Oh, it already is. Maybe this should be a three power function. Quit out of there again. Back into here. Yeah, I think what Duffy Lane is referring to is this, or certainly this. So Although it's a little awkward, I think, you know, high balance, if it was only doing this for one, it would be, I, I could, I could do a negative of that, actually. I think what uh, Duffy means is like this. be something like that if I'm not mistaken. It's functionally the same as the if thing though, so. So I'm not gonna fool with that right at the moment, but I think that is, it seems doable. You could do that. That 
was actually not a change, so I can go right back to here. But even though it wasn't for the sake of being methodical, let's fire up Alien Kitten so we can also quickly see whether it's honoring sample rates properly. Preponderant. <laughs> Resonant. Very unresonant. I should have waited to see whether that would correct itself. Very resonant. Let's jack up these levels a little bit. Now it's very distorty. Let's see if it dials itself back. Because this is super consistent from second to second. Oh, interesting. Duffy switching from juice. Yeah, this is creeping levels up a little bit, and maybe the zero, the two thirds is not correct. Chase that level. Now, funny, now it's not peaking out in volume. We can certainly have problems when we double up the bass. Here, this is the new Sooth. No, not really. Now let's see if it can get back into control again. Here's our Ross in. back, it kind of tries to behave itself a little bit. These overlaps can be problematic.
Yeah, with this, it's definitely not wanting to have all the balances equating to two thirds. Let's just drag out an old favorite. There's no reason that this should work, but Sometimes stuff is just silly and fun. There. So now we're going to find a use for the golden ratio. If this stuff behaves itself with alien kittens, I'll be deeply impressed. Because there's no good reason why it should. That would be silly. Build. Copy. I do need to remember to try the other sample rates. It won't honor the same settings between sample rates because the sample rates are relative to what it's doing. Lots of resonance. Mess with the controls. with an output pad on it because this is all acting relatively right except for yeah I mean it sounds right but my dynamic impacts are way 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 louder than they're supposed to be Creeping up in volume again, though. I can't say as I'm entirely thrilled by that. Maybe 
I just have, I need to have quickness be greater. So I was getting in trouble when I had this. Oh yeah. Yeah, it doesn't like this at all. Yeah, once it starts getting into trouble, it goes crazy. Again, if you center it, it goes back to what it understands. So that's weird. And again, quickness of zero, it'll go crazy easier. I think. has something to do with having the bands be the same. Like it'll freak out when the bands are not different from each other. It'll just blow right up. one channel louder than the other. Well, one reason is quickness is on zero again. I said that's a problem. Let's go to... Does it fix itself? Something's messed up here. side is a lot hotter than the other. And it will restart. Quickness is already doing something. My problem is simply that all of these... Part of my problem is the fact that this sample audio is really exaggerated. Like it's pushing to basically zero constantly all the time. So doing anything weird with it, anything filtery with it is a recipe for trouble. That's kind of why I'm using it. I'm trying to produce trouble to see whether the plugin can survive trouble. Here's a high sample rate version. seem to be about right. Let's it be more resonant. I think it's 
landscaping in a slightly wider range. All in all, it's better behaved at a higher sample rate. Interesting. Yeah, at 192k, it's super well behaved, although all of the frequency range is being squished into the middle. Which would be on account of this part. So if I was to go for, from a square root to a cube root on that parameter and then run the same thing, what do we get? Okay, that seems about right. <laughs> Kinda. Okay, and so I'm making a weird thing because it's not supposed to be really like Soothe, but uh, it does some similar factors. What it's gonna do is you get to do these sort of band passy type effects and select useful areas in the frequency range. I can turn this back up now. balance out with the lower resonance. You can also have them kind of side chain each other a little bit. So the raw sound is like this, and then the modified sound is like this. So, 
Let's see what exactly the same thing is like in 96K. If I get reasonably useful results for all three of these, I'm going to call it a day and say that we're done. That's loud. Try the 44.1K. And then I'm going to bounce to something else and then I'm going to call it a day. want to do soup. I don't like soup. See what we can get out of here. Oh, 
I'll dial this in a little bit with super high resonance. Yeah, there we go. Quickness. I think that kind of behaves. Raw. And energy reassigned. Definitely doing the balancing thing. Dry wet is probably a useful concept here. skip over to something else. Here's our exaggerated one. Alrighty, that should be a fun toy for folks. Either next week or maybe the week afterwards, I'm not sure. I'll call that a day, I've been cranking on this for like three hours. So on 
that note. I'll talk to you folks later. This is going to be the end of the day. And uh, we'll probably roll with that. I like the idea of it being a little wild and untamed. I had it where it was behaving itself fairly well when things weren't too crazy. And when you threw crazy stuff at it, it could go completely bonkers. That's kind of fun. So we'll see. At any rate, I think that is capable of doing neat things while still being a bit of a wild organism. And I think it's just well enough under control that we can run with it. Talk to you guys later.